Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be Josiah Part 2, The End. Um, I didn't know it was going to be, I was so close to the end when I stopped Part 1. Of course, a lot of these I'm doing it uh, late at night when it's quiet in the house and everything. But um, just so you know, the uh, when real revival comes, God's people put away evil. They don't tolerate evil because evil will not tolerate good. Yes, God loves uh, evil so much that he brought the flood of Noah, wiped out the whole world. God loved evil so much that he wiped out Sodom and Gomorrah. God loved the rejection of his son in 70 AD that uh, Jerusalem was destroyed along with the temple. That's how much God loves tolerating evil. I could come up with a few more examples, but, uh, you know, Jericho, the walls fell down. So, let's take a look. Now, the thing is, when, when people tolerate evil, evil will not tolerate them. There was a bunch of sodomites in San Francisco that uh, there was a church that was preaching against sodomy. Well, what did they do? They uh, went into the church, they broke all the windows, ripped the pews out of the floor, destroyed the altar, uh, did a bunch of damage. Police were called. Police stood by and watched them do it. Didn't do a thing. They watched them do it. Well, what do you want to bet the police chief was one of them? And probably three quarters of the police force were them uh so you know they always scream the wicked always scream about tolerance oh we just want tolerance that's all we want and then when they get into power do they show tolerance no because they know better they know that if there was a real revival their lives would be in danger and you're not going to have real revival as long as you've got uh, channels like TBN with the TV preachers. So, all right, Josiah, my favorite, probably my favorite king. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 19. And all the houses also of the high places... The high places, that means where they were sacrificing unto the devils, that were in the cities of Samaria, which the kings of Israel had made to provoke the Lord to anger, Josiah took away. What does it mean he took them away? That didn't mean he packed them up into a nice little box and mailed them to the next door. No. When it says he took them away, it means he got rid of them. And did to them according to all the acts that he had done in Bethel. And he slew, he killed, and he slew all the priests of the high places that were upon the altars and burned men's bones upon them and returned to Jerusalem. And the king, and the king commanded all the people saying, keep the Passover, keep the Passover unto the Lord your God as it is written in the book of this, of this covenant. All right, so King Josiah wanted his people to keep the Passover. Now, if you don't remember, it was in Egypt under Moses where they did the Passover. They took a lamb, sacrificed it, burned it with fire, and ate, and ate unleavened bread. Now, leaven, leavening bread, uh, whether, you know, uh, yeast was the leavening agent. Leaven is always said to be bad in Scripture. It was likened unto sin. Uh, for as far as I know, there are two types of 
yeast leavening. There's baker's yeast, which is what they use to make bread to rise, to make it fluffy. Unleavened bread is, uh, you know, like a cracker. It's hard. A lot of people don't like that. And then there is what they call brewer's yeast, which they use to make alcohol. You know, bread, wine, uh, distilled liquor, you know. And basically, if you take wine and you distill all the alcohol out of it and you, and you concentrate it, well, then you could have, you know, hard drink, what they call in the Bible, hard drink. So, the uh, in the Passover... People were told to take, go through the house, take all the leaven out of the house and throw it out. A physical act. But there was a spiritual application. We were supposed to look at our lives and remove all the worldly leaven in our lives, whether it be baker's yeast or brewer's yeast. Now, Drunkenness, as you, I'm sure everybody knows, is uh, condemned in Scripture. However, some would argue, and I wouldn't say yes or no, but Passover essentially was replaced by the Lord's Supper. And basically, Jesus took the wine and the unleavened bread and he said, you know, take, eat, this is my body. Take and drink, this is the blood of my new covenant. Jesus was the sinless sacrifice, the Passover lamb, for the new covenant. All right, so let's read verse 22, and then we'll go back. Uh, surely there was not holden such a Passover from the days of the judges that judged Israel, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel, nor of the kings of Judah. See, kings of Israel, kings of Judah, not the same. But in the 18th year of King Josiah, wherein this Passover was holden in, to the Lord in Jerusalem, moreover the workers with familiar spirits, in other words, devils, and the wizards, and the images, and the idols, and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem, did Josiah put away, that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. Uh, all these so-called Torah keepers, they're liars and hypocrites, because until you do until they want to do what Josiah did and put away those with familiar spirits and wizards and the sodomites, they're not keeping Torah. They can talk about it all they want, but that's keeping Torah. Uh, when they want to go to San Francisco and, and keep Torah, then they can talk to me about keeping Torah. But until then, they're a bunch of hypocrites and liars. So, but it's not... You know, we need a king to keep Torah, but that ain't going to happen. Verse 25, And like unto him there was no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, neither after him arose there any like him. Notwithstanding, the Lord turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath, wherein his anger was kindled against Judah because of all their provocations that Manasseh had provoked him withal. And the Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight, as I have removed Israel. Now remember, Israel was taken into captivity by the Assyrians. Uh, a few I think uh, I think it was like a couple hundred years before. I forget the exact number of years, but, you know, Judah watched all this happen. You know, a matter of fact, the Assyrian Empire was on the doorsteps of, at the walls of Jerusalem, and the Lord sent an angel and killed 180, over 100, 180,000 uh, Assyrian soldiers. And that was the end of the siege. But uh, 
You think that little bit of history uh, would have them serve the Lord? No. Uh-uh. So, and the Lord said, I will remove Judah out of my sight, as I have removed Israel, and will cast off this city, Jerusalem, which I have chosen, and the house of which I said, my name shall be there. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? Um, and then uh, you could read the rest. You know, Josiah went to fight against uh, Pharaoh in each of Egypt, and he was killed. And then in, they returned his body to Jerusalem. And then his son uh, ruled and reigned in his stead. And then he did evil. And then shortly thereafter, Babylon came and took Judah away for 70 years until they returned under Ezra and Nehemiah. So let's take a look at um, the Passover. Or rather, the Lord's Supper. Now, what gets me, uh, I know that I'm listening to devils or the devil's kids or those that listen to the devils and the devil's kids. When people will say, oh, well, you know, if you do Passover and you do the Lord's Supper, well, you know, you're a legalist. And you're trying to earn your salvation, and you know, you're a legalist. But uh, they don't want to do what the Lord says to do. But then when they say when they say you can do things the, that the Lord doesn't want you to do, like uh, Jeremiah 10, where they decorate the tree, December, read Jeremiah chapter 10. Read about them decorating the tree. And then think about December 25th. Or uh, Easter, which is the name of the spring goddess of fertility. In the Bible, her name is Ishtar. Uh, you want to have a Easter egg hunt? Chocolate eggs, uh, you know, those kind of things. You know, bunny rabbits, uh, the Playboy bunny. I mean, the Easter bunny. Uh, no, I had it right the first time, right? You know, there's a reason why Playboy picked a bunny. Uh, as their symbol. And, and, and when, how did the, the church replace Passover with Easter, which is the spring goddess of fertility? But you know what? When you, when you uh, bring that up, and then people will say, well, oh, you're just, you know, you're just being harsh, and you want to take away the children's fun. You know, the Easter egg hunt. And what do bunny rabbits have to do with eggs anyways? You know, Bunnies are, are they not mammals? There's no, you know, the eggs are inside the bunny, not on the outside. Uh, but, uh, but the thing is, the things the Bible says not to do, the so-called church people will say, well, we have liberty. And then the things the Bible says to do, if you do them, they'll call you a legalist. So they tell you not to do the things the Lord says to do, and then the things that the Lord says not to do, they do. Well, Easter was called Ishtar. She was the queen of heaven. You want to read the queen of heaven? Guess what? Let's go to that book of Jeremiah. You know that, that book of Jeremiah that, uh, I think it's Jeremiah. That's that book that's really depressing. All right, let's read Jeremiah 44, and then uh, we'll uh, go read a little bit about the Lord's Supper. Verse 1, the word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews that dwelt in the land of Egypt, which dwell at Migdol, and at Tophanes, and at Nof, and in the country of Pathros, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, ye have seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem and upon all the cities of Judah. And behold, this day they are a desolation, and no man dwelleth therein. Why? Because uh, the Lord let Babylon carry him away. Verse 3. Here's the thing. Why? Because of their wickedness, which they have committed to provoke me to anger, in that they went to burn incense and to serve other gods 
whom they knew not, neither they ye nor your fathers. Howbeit I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. But they hearkened not. Nope, they wouldn't listen. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ears to, to turn from their wickedness, to burn no incense unto their gods. Wherefore my fury and mine anger was poured forth, and was kindled in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem, and they are wasted and desolate as at this day. Therefore now thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, Wherefore commit ye this great evil against your souls, to cut off from you man and woman, child and suckling, out of Judah, to leave you none to, remon to remain, in that ye provoke me unto wrath, and the works of your hands, burning incense unto other gods in the land of Egypt, uh, whither ye be gone to dwell, that ye might cut yourselves off, and, and that ye might be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. Uh, as far as I know, Egypt is never spoken of nicely in Scripture. Never. That I, that I know of. But what do I know? Verse 9, Have ye forgotten the wickedness of your fathers and the wickedness of the kings of Judah and the wickedness of their wives and your own wickedness and the wickedness of your wives which they have committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? They are not humbled even unto this day. Neither have they feared nor walked in my law nor in my statutes that I set before you and before your fathers. Let me tell you something, people. When you have a king... A king has a kingdom, and every kingdom has laws. And God the Father has a kingdom, and he has laws. And everybody tells you that all the laws were nailed to the cross. It doesn't know what they're talking about. Now, the laws of blood sacrifice that the Levites were supposed to perform were fulfilled around 33 AD when Christ was crucified. But all the other laws, you know, uh, have they been, were, were the laws, were those laws nailed to the cross? Does, does the Lord want us to uh, let murderers out of jail for good behavior? Does he want us to lock up murderers in a mental institution uh, not guilty by reason of insanity so that they can escape and kill again? Uh, I don't think so. You know, there was a guy that just killed three people near Tampa, Florida. Uh, this is July 31st, 2020. Uh, he had been arrested for felonies 200, over 200 times. And the guy was like 26 years old. I mean... It's a good thing he didn't kill anybody previously. He might have gotten, you know, prison. Well, he did. He killed three people. You know, arrested for 200 different times. Really? Really? And then they blame the gun. Yeah, it's the gun's fault. So let's take all the guns away. And guess what happens when you uh, let criminals out of prison? They commit crimes. That's what criminals do. You know, if we followed God's laws, people that blasphemed the Lord, people that, uh, you know, committed capital offenses like rape and murder, they should be put to death. Matter of fact, televise it on Friday night TV, entertainment. You know, uh, I guarantee you there'd be a lot less crime. So, uh, verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 11. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will set my face against you for evil and to cut off all Judah. And I will take the remnant of Judah that have set their faces to go into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, and they shall all be consumed and fall in the land of Egypt. They shall even be consumed by the sword and by the famine. They shall die from the least even unto the greatest by the sword and by the famine. And they shall be an ex execration and an astonishment and a curse and a reproach. See, the Lord told his people to 
go to Babylon. Don't go to Egypt, but they fled to Egypt to get away from the Babylonians. So they didn't believe uh, the Lord, and they wanted to trust in Egypt. Well, Babylon took care of Egypt. Babylon was considered the world's first great empire, as far as I know in the Bible. I could be wrong, but I, I think so. For I will punish them that dwell in the land of Egypt as I have punished Jerusalem by the sword, or by the famine, and by the pestilence, disease, so that none of the remnant of Judah which are gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there shall escape or remain, that they should return into the land of Judah to the which they have a desire to return to dwell there, for none shall return but such as shall escape. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying. So here it is, Jeremiah is telling them the word of the Lord, and what are they going to say? As for the word which thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. Uh, you know what? All that stuff you're saying, we ain't going to listen. We don't want to hear it. Uh, that's the Bob translation. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven. We're going to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven. What's her name? Easter. Ishtar. She has a lot of different names. Lilith. Uh, guess what? Even the Shekina. You ever heard of the Shekinah? Uh, that's the Queen of Heaven. They call her the Holy Spirit in uh, Judaic circles. Yeah, when you hear somebody talk about the she Kina, S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H, and they're talking about the glory of God, the Holy Spirit, they're talking about the Queen of Heaven, according to the rabbis. Yeah, Easter is the Queen of Heaven. The goddess. She's the wife of God, their God. The Holy Spirit is called a he in my King James Bible. But if you don't believe my King James Bible, well, then worship the Queen of Heaven. I don't care. All I can do, I, like, you know, I, I don't compare myself to a prophet, but all I can do is show you the Word of God, and if you don't believe it, well, hey, on you, buddy. Or gal, you know, and uh, the Wiccans, the witches, they love the Queen of Heaven. They call her Lilith. Um, according to the legends of the you-know-whos, she was the first wife of Adam. And uh, she didn't like Adam being on top. And she says, well, no, I want to be on top. But um, I don't know if that's figuratively or literal or both. She wanted to wear the pants in the family or, or in the bedroom. I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm not trying to be crude, but this is what they teach. And, you know, I'm trying to get the message across. But uh, she decided she didn't want to be on the bottom with Adam on top. So she left Adam and became the wife of Samael, which some people say that's Satan. Other people say that's one of Satan's uh, top uh, generals. I don't know. I don't get too much deep into that stuff. Doesn't matter. It's a devil, teaching of devils, doctrine of devils. What can I tell you? So they wanted to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven, Easter, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of victuals, food, and were well and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, Easter, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. 
And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, and did we make cakes to worship her, hot cross buns, right? Uh, and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men. Then Jeremiah said unto all the people and to the men and to the women and to all the people which had given him that answer, saying, The incense that ye burned in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers, your kings and your princes, and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them and came it not into his mind? So that the Lord could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which ye have committed. Therefore is your land a desolation and an astonishment and a curse without an inhabitant as at this day. Because ye have burned incense and because ye have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord nor walked in his law nor in his statutes nor in his testimonies. Therefore this evil is happened unto you as at this day. So... Wherefore, Jeremiah said unto all the people and to all the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all Judah that are in the land of Egypt. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouths and fulfilled with your hands, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. Ye shall surely accomplish your vows and surely perform your vows. Uh, look in an old dictionary, people, and look up Easter. And if it says goddess, you've got a good dictionary. Uh, if it doesn't say goddess, female god, well, then you've got a lousy dictionary. Look it up. Therefore, hear ye the word of the Lord, all Judah that dwelt in the land of Egypt. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, saith the Lord, that my name shall... No more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in the land, in all the land of Egypt, saying, The Lord God liveth. Why is that? Because he's going to slay them all. Don't you be worshiping the Queen of Heaven and then speaking the name of the Lord. Ain't going to happen. That's the Bob translation. Behold, I will watch over them for evil and not for good. And all the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by the famine until there be an end of them. Yet a small number that escaped the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah, and all the remnant of Judah that are gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there shall know whose words shall stand, mine or theirs. And like I mentioned before, uh, according to legend, Jeremiah took some of the uh, daughters of Judah, of the king, and uh, went into Ireland. Tia, T-E-A, or T, Tiffy, T-E-P-H-I, and married uh, the king of Ireland. And let's face it, people, um, Ireland, Scotland, and the United Kingdom uh, gave us the King James Bible. After all, James was uh, king of Scotland that became king of England. All right, so verse 29. This shall be a sign unto you, saith the Lord, that I will punish you in this place, that ye may know that my words shall surely stand against you for evil. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give you Pharaoh Hophra, king of Egypt, into the land of hand of his enemies and into the hand of them that seek his life, as I gave Zedekiah, king of Judah, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, his enemy, and that sought his life. Ah, oh, there you go. So, should we celebrate Passover and the Lord's Supper, or should we celebrate the Playboy Bunny? I mean, I'm sorry, the Easter Bunny. And, uh, you know, read Jeremiah chapter 10, where it says... You know, the, the decorating of a tree. Can you think of a time when people decorate trees with silver and gold? Uh, you know, there's not many things I agree with the Jehovah's Witnesses with, but uh, that's actually one of them. Uh, when the Lord tells you not to do something, it's a good idea not to do it. When the Lord says to do something, I think it's a good idea to do it. And when you get a... a uh, 
somebody telling you, well, you know, you're a legalist, well, maybe that's a compliment. You know, uh, in Joplin, Missouri, a number of years ago, there was a woman pastor, probably reading from an NIV Bible, probably a lesbian, I don't know, and uh, they were worshiping on Easter Sunday, and a tornado came through and ripped up the church and killed several of their parishioners, including some children. And she was like, you know, our faith is really shooken, but we're not going to give up. We're going to persevere. We don't know why God would allow this to happen. Really, you don't know why God would allow that to happen. Really. Uh, they should have asked me. I would have been happy to tell them why God allowed it to happen. God was sending them a wake-up call. You know, the thing is, you got to come to the Lord His way. You don't come to your way. That's just the way it is. You know, I, don't, I never wanted to teach the Bible. I knew and I know that I'm going to have to give an account for every word that I've ever taught. All right, he's going to get make, make me give an account one day. You know, like if you're a cashier at a store, you know, at the end of your shift, you got an account for every penny. Well, I'm going to have to account for every penny. And I'm, I'm, I'm scared, really. I'm scared. Most preachers, they're not, they have no fear. No fear at all. I, I honestly think that the great majority of these preachers are possessed of devils. I, I really do. I think they're possessed. I, I just, I can't figure it out. I mean, I'm nobody special. Well, like, like I have some special... No, I, I'm not anything special. All right, so let's read about, uh, you know, Josiah had the greatest Passover there ever was. But let's read about the Lord's Supper. Let's turn to John chapter 6. I love this. Uh, I use this to uh, trick the vampire wannabes. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of people that think that uh, they could be vampires. Really, I'm serious. There's a bunch of them. I had a vampire website. Well, wannabe website. Where I told them about they need the blood to live forever. Little did they know they were going to find that I was talking about the blood of Jesus. But then Google deleted my website from their listings. Uh, but, you know, and that was over 15 years ago. So I knew, I knew this stuff was coming. John chapter 6, verse 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. What? We got to be cannibals and vampires? Uh, not hardly. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead, he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? In other words, man, what is he talking about? This is so hard to understand. Verse 61, When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who 
they were that believed not, and who should betray him? Judas Iscariot, anyone? And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come to me except it were given unto him of my Father. Do you know that only those that are given to Jesus from the Father will come to him? Nowhere in the Bible does it say that everybody was given to him of the Father. Nowhere. Listen to this. John chapter 6, verse 66. John 6, 6, 6. Listen carefully. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. John 6, 6, 6. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Oh, yeah. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. So, let's go to Matthew chapter 26. Uh, did the Lord's Supper replace the Passover? I kind of lean towards that, but, uh, you know, if I have gotten together with small groups of people and uh, taken lamb and bitter herbs and unleavened bread and had dinner in honor of the Lord and read, you know, the, the Passover. And, uh, but the thing is, my problem is, uh, I'm not sure exactly when it falls. Uh, because, you know, you've got different groups of people. They go, some go by the lunar, some go by the solar. Uh, others, I'm not sure. So, I don't know. And I'm not a trained Levitical priest. You know, I'm just some guy that's read the Bible a few times. That's all I am. I mean, the Levites were trained from a very, very young age. They knew this stuff inside and out. The book of Leviticus, that was their book. That was their training manual. And, you know, they were trained from a youth, and then they couldn't become a priest. I think they had to be 25 years old. 25 is about the age when a, a young man starts to actually grow up. And a man couldn't become the high priest until he was 30. You know, hopefully by the time you're 30, you have a level of maturity among men. And ladies, let me tell you something. I, you know, women seem to grow up about five years before the men do. I'll admit it. You know, if you marry a guy before he's 25 to 30 years old, uh, you're kind of looking at trouble. But then again, the Bible says the wife of thy youth for a man. So, uh... You know, guys just grow up slower than women, it seems. I admit it. I've seen it in my own life. I didn't even, uh, I got married to the mother of my children. How old was I? I was about 23, 20, 24, something like that. And uh, I just, I didn't grow up until after, after she got tired of waiting for me to grow up. I didn't treat her right, and uh, she found uh, somebody else, and I deserved it. So, what can I tell you? But uh, I hope one day her and the children find the Lord. But, uh, yeah. All right, so Matthew 26, 26. 
And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Ah, the unleavened bread, the bread without sin, the leavening. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many, not all, which is shed for many, for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Now, it's funny. Uh, the vine was indicative of Israel. So let's take a look at Matthew. I'm sorry, Mark, Mark, Mark. Mark 14, 22. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank it of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And, um, you know, the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's when the Lord's going to drink of the, vine, uh, the fruit of the vine. Think about it. What was the first miracle that Jesus did? The wedding at Cana. He turned the water into wine. You know, and then there's the Baptists, they'll say, oh, no, no, it wasn't wine, it was grape juice, it was Welch's. I mean, really? You know, the governor of the feast even said that, uh, you know, uh, people in the beginning put forth the best wine, and then after men are well drunk, they put out that was, you know, the worst. But he says, but thou hast saved the good wine for last. I mean, who says that about grape juice? Nobody. I mean, it's pretty obvious, and I'm paraphrasing there. But, you know, really, you know, that's what people do. They put out the good stuff first after everybody's drunk. Then they bring out the, the, the rot gut, they call it. And I know because I used to drink. I never was a big drinker. There were times that I did drink too much. Uh, but I was never much of a, a drinker. I just, I don't know. And Dad always said to me, he says, you, Bob, you don't drink beer? Well, I drank beer when I was in Germany, in the Army, because that was real beer. That was the good, you know, that was good stuff. I liked it. But uh, when I got back to America, ugh, terrible. Budweiser is not beer. Uh, and, uh, you know, my dad always said, well, you know, if somebody doesn't drink, I, I don't trust him. <laughs> so he probably knew too many church people. Church people, not Christians. So people, what can I tell you? You know, Josiah tried to bring revival. When there is a real revival, movie theaters are going to close. And not because of the virus or the fake virus. Liquor stores will go out of business. You know, people will take their televisions and throw them out the window. That's when you know you've got a real revival. Uh, most of these churches, when they talk about having a revival, they're talking about people speaking gibberish in the church and passing the collection plate around and people jumping around. That's not a revival. A revival is when people get on their hands and knees, sackcloth and ashes, and fasting and prayer and crying. That's a revival. And throwing wickedness and sin out of their lives. That's revival. But as long as the liquor stores and gambling and porn is uh, number one on the internet and stuff, that's not a revival. That's the counterfeit. You know, TV preachers would be poor. They, they would have to sell one of their Learjets because people would quit donating to those. You know, people will have spiritual discernment 
I just can't believe that people have no spiritual discernment. I, I have to think that most of these people going to church are not saved. It, it, I don't know. You know, people have no spiritual discernment. None. There was a guy that did a video about uh, Benny Hinn, his uh, little uh, healing lines, and he recorded it for like several months. And he showed that the people in the prayer lines were the same people over the course of months. I mean, how much did he pay those actors? And according to this guy, Benny offered him a quarter million dollars to take the, the film, uh, to take it off the... Um, well, this was before the internet is what it is today. But he was selling... Uh, it as a movie and uh, you know <laughs> Benny Hinn according to him offered him a quarter million dollars and he turned it down so uh, but yeah like I said that was like I don't remember the exact year but it was around 2000 but uh, it seems like they were actors and of course you know when they put it on YouTube of course they file a copyright claim and they remove it. But, uh, you know, I'm telling you people, read the book of Judges. Read the book of Judges. When God brought persecution, the remnant repented, came to the Lord, and the Lord blessed them. And then when they blessed them, they got fat and happy, and they forgot all about the Lord. It's a cycle, people. And then the Lord brought persecution. Well, this end times persecution is going to be unlike anything you've ever seen in your life. And God's only going to do a remnant. So, all right, well, this is the end. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.